Praise the Lord. Hello, everybody. Well, it's been five years of open-air evangelism. Five years of open-air preaching. Praise the Lord. I've arrived. I've done it all now. There's nothing... Oh, no. That actually would not be true. <laughs> I'm making a little light joke there. Now, I, I, some people say that five years of preaching and you're in or something. I don't know, whatever. Um, this is my five-year anniversary coming up. Uh, five years ago, I put on this preaching gear hoodie. Five years ago, I lifted up a banner and hoisted the banner. And I uh, got the bullhorn out and started preaching the gospel. Uh, praise the Lord, I was called to do this. I was called uh, by God to do this work. Uh, we're all called to, to do the work of an evangelist. We're all called to evangelize in that sense. Uh, but why open-air preaching? Well, I've done plenty of videos uh, over the years. Uh, this, this video is going on Facebook Live right now. I will upload it to my YouTube channel in a little while. Uh, you can find all kinds of examples as to why I would do open-air evangelism. Uh, the, the, the direct commandment from uh, Jesus Christ himself, which is look at the, the Bible, King James, uh, we look at the Bible here in Mark 16 and verse 15, and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. So when I figured out my life as a Christian, and I got right with God, and I got rid of all my sins of commission, my willful sin, I realized I was committing a sin of omission. I realized I wasn't doing the work that I was uh, uh, born again to do. I, I wasn't doing this great work. And the best way, I, I figured out the best way to do it is, is like uh, casting a great net. And that's what, that's what uh, street preaching does. It's like casting a great net. You, you're preaching to crowds at concerts, pride parades, uh, regular parades. You're doing all these kinds of venues and you're going out and preaching the gospel. The other side of it too is you're also like a pillar of righteousness against the wicked. That's, that's the other part of it. But the main point of open air evangelism is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. So where does that leave me today? Well, it leaves me with a desire, um, as it should with any born again believer who's uh, called to do this kind of work. And that's to have disciples. Uh, Jesus said in uh, Matthew uh, chapter 28, verses 19 and 20, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. And so the progression of going from disciple to uh, discipling has taken place in my life. Um, am I there? I would say I've got some work to do yet. That's why I praise God. Um, I thank God for Church of Jackson uh, being trained. Uh, I've been trained by others on uh, being trained in the local church. And uh, so that's where I am today. Uh, I'm here uh, because I believe in the local church. And I believe that Jesus Christ has always been building his church. And I've seen street preachers come and I've seen street preachers go. It's a revolving door. Just like churches too, I get it. There's churches out there that are just revolving doors. I get, I get it. But the one thing that never fails, the one thing that will never fail is his church. Jesus Christ said, I build my church upon the rock. And he said that the gates of hell shall never prevail against it. I've seen street preacher groups come and go. I've seen three-letter acronym organizations come and go, and they will continue to do that. But at the end of the day, Jesus Christ's church will always stand. Hallelujah. And that's why it's good to be involved in a local church. And one of the things I found very important 
uh, being involved with a local church is the more there's more things to do than street preaching. Now that should be one of the aspects of every local church should be open air evangelism, even if you're going to do uh, the easy the easy way, <laughs> as some would call it, the Ray Comfort way per se, quote unquote, which is not even really easy because it's all confrontational no matter how you do it. You still got to go up to someone and say, "Did you get a gospel track?" Or you still got to go up to someone and ask them, "Oh, heaven or hell today?" Or you have to ask them a, a question: "Are you innocent or guilty?" Or do you believe you're a good person? If you want to do the good person test, it still involves confrontation. Uh, but the local church is supposed to do that. And I've, I've said this to many of you uh, that know me. I've said this to you in person. And I'm going to say it here on this video too. If you could get one person to go stand on a corner with a banner and a bullhorn and preach the gospel, glory to God. But if you get a pastor to do it, then you get a whole church that goes with the pastor. I've seen it here. I've seen it at Lighthouse Anabaptist Church. I've seen it at Consuming Fire Fellowship. I've seen it in all the churches, lots of churches, such as uh, KJV Baptist Church down in Florida. You see the pastor uh, out with them. If they, the pastors can't always go out. So that what they do is they'll raise up evangelists in their church and train them to do the work. Train them for the Word of God. And they can go out and evangelize. And that's how your church will grow. It's through evangelism. And so in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 5, this is an exhortation to pastors. This is written to Timothy, a bishop. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. And the one thing I do not see a lot of, I do not see a lot of pastors getting out from behind their pulpit and going and proclaiming the gospel at a, at a, a college campus, at a, a concert venue. They won't. They definitely don't want to go stand outside the pride events. A lot of these churches are inside the pride events, taking part of it. And where are the pastors, the righteous pastors? They're preaching from behind their pulpits. They're preaching to the choir a lot of times. And we need pastors. We need pastors that are going to preach the word of God unashamedly from the pulpit too. I don't get me wrong. Pulpit preaching all the way. But where are the evangelists in your church? And one of the other disconnects I see in the quote unquote street preaching community, which is a joke by the way. There's so much discord in it. I see these uh, men who even belong to churches, but you don't see their pastors. Or you see the pastors sometimes, and you don't see their congregants. It's going both ways. You, you see, the, I see these things all the time in the quote-unquote street preaching community, as they call it. I had a brother come up to me one time, and he said, Brother, why is there so much discord in the street preachers? I said, because he's not building a street preaching community. He's building his church. That's why there's so much discord. Now, Brother Keith, uh, my pastor here at Church in Jackson, he had a really good word. He said that he believes that God has raised up the abolitionists through the AHA, um, which is a dead organization, kind of, sort of. Of course, they would they would disagree with me on that. Uh, that it, well, I won't even get into that. But then uh, that the AHA and the street preachers are all judgments against the church for not doing this work. It certainly looks like it because I do see pastors starting to wake up and go out. It, it, it is good. I, I am seeing it. But my encouragement is to have more pastors out there uh, leading their whole flock out there, doing the, doing the work of an evangelist. And of course, the charge to Timothy in um, chapter 4 here, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, I charge thee therefore... Before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead, and is appearing in his kingdom, preach the word, be instant in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Preach the word, be instant in season and out of season. I don't know how many times 
I've been with some really good street preachers. I handed them the mic, and they were ready to preach right there in the spot. Whether they had something prepared or not, it was prepared in their heart. So um, I'm encouraged that uh, after five years of, of open-air evangelism, I'm not going to stop now. I'm going to keep going, praise the Lord. It's good to be under the authority of a local church with, pa with a pastor and elders and other fellow brothers that are going to hold me accountable as I will hold them accountable to the Word of God. Uh, this is the kind of thing that we need today. We need the churches to get together um, and do this work. Um, we need the pastors to get up. We need the, the men in the church to get up. And we need women to go out there with the men and stand there with them and support them and do the work as a church. And the one thing I'm very encouraged about here at Church of Jackson, we're open-air evangelists, we're street preachers. A brother here, Brother Kendall, does jail ministry. Brother Kendall does work like you see behind me here, putting up billboards. Uh, we do abolition work outside the pink, the wicked pink house here in Mississippi, the last abortion clinic here. We do abolition work. Uh, we even have a missionary, Brother Austin Pilgrim and his family. So we're, it almost seems like we kind of got all, all these things going here for us. Uh, it's well-rounded. But uh, my call is to be an evangelist. My call is to do the work of an evangelist, to go out and do this work I know the Lord has called me to do, to go and preach the gospel to every creature. And I'll tell you this right now, uh, I, got my, I got my life right, I got my household right, before I ever, I, before I ever went out there. Now, have I figured everything out? I sure had it. I, I got a lot. I got a lot to figure out yet. I got a lot to learn. That's why it's so important to be in fellowship. Don't be a lone wolf, or I'm sorry, lone ranger. <laughs> but maybe, maybe, maybe wolf is implied to some of you. I don't know. Judge yourself. So anyways, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for your support throughout the years. And uh, praise God, maybe in five years I could do another video. And maybe I could shed some more light on things. Uh, God bless you all. And, and uh, God bless all you street preachers out there. If you're not in a local church, you better get in one. Uh, don't, don't forsake the assembly. Hebrews 10.25. And uh, God bless you all.